Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Meat Made, and today we are back in Kira talking about support still. It's alright, it's been a loaded topic and we have covered so much. My goal is after this video, you're going to have all of the things that you need in your tool belt to be able to print beautiful supports. And I guess to be able to print beautiful models, because I don't think the supports are that pretty. And today, we are going to be talking about how we can stop burning through these spools so quickly. What can we do to save as much filament as we physically can? There are ways that we can actually print less supports and have them just as good. And I'm also going to touch on how can you make those little tiny supports that just kind of stick up in random spots a little more beefy to where they won't just suddenly break off and then you've ruined your print. I'm sorry, but I know every one of you has probably been there to where you've got this beautiful print and it's got this little tiny support that every single time you see it just wobbling when the nozzle hits and then just suddenly timber. But I've got a way that you can actually make those a lot thicker and it will not break off as easy. So let's go ahead, dive into this video and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is talk about how we can save filament when we're printing supports. So what I have is this little model with an overhang. And what I've got is this is only touching the build plate. So for this overhang right here, it's actually not even touching. So it's only coming off the build plate. Then if we go down, you can see the support settings. If you want to see my roof interface settings, you can check out the this video up here on the top. I actually go over how to find your perfect roof and floor support settings. So if we come down to the support, you can see that I have a roof interface, but it is not going all the way to the edge. All it is doing is stopping right here on the edge of this brim. And it's the correct distance that I actually have set within my settings. And as you can see, what I have in here is a zigzag support pattern. So the zigzag pattern actually doesn't use a ton of filament, and especially if you have it at a low density. So you see right here, we have a support density of 15%. And that's pretty good for this. I could probably go a little less, but we're going to leave it at that. And it's going to take 13 grams of filament and 4.41 meters of filament. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to go out of the support section and come on down here to experimental. And we're going to scroll down and where it says enable conical support, we are going to click that. Now, let's slice this up and we can look at this model now and we see so you can see that this model does not go straight up and down. What it actually does is creates a smaller base and then starts to come out layer by layer in a conical shape, hence the name. So it is making this cone, essentially, from the base. And it gets wider and wider until it gets to the widest setting it needs to be at. If you see here, it is right up against the shape because it comes up from the bottom over and up. These are very similar to tree supports in the way that these can actually go over your model without actually having a floor interface. This is a super nice feature to be able to save you more filament. So now you can see this is going to take 12 grams of filament and 3.99 meters. It's actually saving us filament to be able to do this. And this is just one little support. So if you see here, it actually starts at the bottom right here with a small base. Then it starts to grow out until it hits to the full size it needs to be. Conical supports. Here are the few things that you just need to know. Conical support angle, you're 30%. So when we found our support overhang angle, mine was 50 degrees, and this is set to 30 degrees. You want to go way below what your 3D printer can handle because you do not want any accidents and 
your supports failing. So what we're going to do is usually I would say don't go past 40 degrees, but you can and test out your own printer. But it is wise to be as safe as possible with your conical supports. Your minimum width is how small it will actually get. So here, let's look at the... So let's look at our bottom here. You can see this right here. Now, if I change this to a, say, 10, you can see how much bigger it has actually gotten. And if I change this to, say, a 2, you can see how much smaller it's gotten. When you're dealing with a smaller conical shape like this, you have a very high potential for your support to break off before it even gets to what it's touching. I would be very wary of going under five millimeters because this does give a good enough shape and you can also use your brim to be able to get a better adhesion to your bed. So that is conical supports. So I went ahead and printed these out just so you can see what is the difference truly. Now this is the standard support that is just straight off of the bed and I'm gonna go ahead and rip those off right now for you. So there we go. So, so using the settings for my roof interface, it's a very nice overhang and nothing looks bad about it in any way. But you can see here, this is the amount of filament that I used. Now with this, you can see with the conical, it actually printed out this cone shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip this one off now. And you can see how much easier this came off. I can also grab it and it's less filament. So looking at these two, you can see how it even went around the back. And looking, so this is the one with the conical. This is the one with the standard support. They look identical. There is nothing wrong with either one of these. So conical supports is a very good thing to use if you're trying to save filament because it still covers everywhere it needs to and if you look at the widths here it actually printed more surface so I actually covered more surface on this one than I did this one because it stopped right here because it was just off the bed I could have done everywhere and it would have been on top of this too but I made this specifically with a small lip because I don't really want to put supports on that so conical is a beautiful experimental setting that you can start playing with and trying to save yourself some filament. So I am actually going to leave the conical supports on just so I can go over this next feature to show you how much filament we can actually save. So our next thing is we want to look at our support density. Right now I have it set to 15%, which is actually just perfect for this. But there's a way to reduce the amount of your support density throughout your model. So we're going to scroll down to our settings and then you are going to see this gradual support infill steps. Now what does that mean? I'm going to go ahead and put one on this and slice it. And to show you. So you can see our actual infill density is actually a lot bigger. But watch as we go up. So when we're almost to the top, it actually creates another layer. So it's creating more of a density within the support infill. So it's bringing it up by the time it gets to the very top, it is at 15%. So I could actually just have it print at a lower density and then bring it to this. Now I could make it more of a gradual increase. So if I did this to say, let's say three. So that's going to give me three steps of infill density. So if I come down here, you're going to see hardly anything. Then it's going to give me one big one, two big ones, three, and then it's there. Now sometimes this is not what you're wanting. Now if you do notice, it's hollow until it gets here. It prints a few lines. Then it prints another few lines, so I bet you're wondering, well, does this ever fail? And I am going to tell you this right now. Yes, it does. But there is something we can do to change that. So right here, gradual support infill step 
height. So if I change this to say, instead of one, say three millimeters, and then slice it, it's going to give us a lot more height for us to be able to make sure that we are actually creating a good infill. And you can see here, it's starting a lot earlier, then the next one starts, then the next one starts, and then we are at the end, at our 15% density. So we can change this density if we want, but honestly, that is a really good density. So this is another way for us to actually save on filament. It can save you quite a bit of filament over time. So right now, we're at 11 grams, 3.66 meters of filament. So this model without supports at all is actually 9 grams, 3.17 meters. So we're talking about this support at its fullest size is 3 grams of filament. And we were able to cut it down by a third. So I hope that helps you understand that you actually can cut down your filament usage by at least a third. Because this is a very small... This is a very small model and it's not using a lot of filament, but I tell you what, using just a couple of these things right here, you are going to start saving a lot of filament. And honestly, that's what's important here, is not wasting filament. So the last part on saving you even more filament is this setting is also just straight in your infill. I'm going to switch this to grid and say, make it 10%. Go ahead and slice this, and looking here, we really don't need all of this until we get to about right here. We don't need an infill that much. It doesn't need to be this dense for just making an upward box. So if I would actually go into my gradual steps, and let's just say I do two, and the infill step height is 1.5, let's go ahead and make that two, and I'm going to slice it. So you can see here, it's a big grid, starts to make another one, then another one, then another one, and then there we go. So this is another way for you to actually save filament by selecting how much of an infill you're actually wanting to use. And sometimes you might have a model that's not this simple, obviously, and you might have to just make your infill without any steps, and that's perfectly fine. But these are some ways for you to start saving some more of your filament. So now to just show you, I have this donut on stilts. Don't ask me why, I just started making random shapes that needed supported. So imagine that you have something that's actually supported here, but it's still at an angle and you might want more support. Or you just need it to come out a little farther so it doesn't fall off. There is a beautiful setting that will actually give you that. And if there's small little overhangs and things like that, sometimes you need to give yourself a little more extra supports. So I know I talked about saving filament. Now this is about wasting more filament. Might as well hit both sides. So where you want to go is your support horizontal expansion. So before I change this, I want to show you what it looks like right now. This right here is essentially just covering all of the areas that we need that is over our angle of 50 degrees. So now if I want this thing to actually have these support supports to go out a little farther just in case to have a little more structure to them, you can go down here and let's say four millimeters. Let's go extreme just to show you what it does. All right, so you see there, now it's coming way out. So I bet you're wondering, okay, why would I really need these supports to be wider than the actual area it's supporting? So the key here is if you have small, tiny, little thin supports that they keep breaking off, this is really where you can make those supports more beefy you're just going to have to increase those supports so it can actually stay on your build plate and it's big enough to where it won't get knocked off if the nozzle like drags across it like it would be if it was super thin. So if they are very thin supports, this is fantastic. 
so you can just add on to your support horizontal expansion. So in the last few videos, we have talked a lot about Cura supports. There's just so much to tackle when it comes to this topic. I haven't even covered every single thing, but I've covered all the main things to really get you started in making you print beautiful supports. So like always, I have to say, if you have any questions about Cura, or if there's a specific topic about Cura that I have not covered that you'd like to know more about, leave me a comment and let me know. Because it is a very complicated topic, and it took me forever to figure out how to get my supports just right. And But once I did, I rarely have support issues. And I hope the same for you now. So if you've missed any of my other Cura videos on how I do supports or how I do general settings, I'll go ahead and throw up that full playlist right here for you. Other than that, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.